Music. I'm going to spend some time on this one. This is going to need a, a pretty big answer. First, before I begin, everything in Islam has limits. Because we have what's called halal and haram. That means there's limits. There are things that are permissible in Islam, and there are things which are not. Now, in worship, everything is like this. It's all haram. All worship is haram except what Allah made permissible. You cannot add anything to what Allah said is our worship. So when it comes to worship, don't do any worship unless you have a clear evidence for it. Okay? Everybody with me? If it comes to worship, if you don't have a clear evidence for it, don't do it. Otherwise, you could be going with shaitan right straight to hell. But in the life, you can do anything you want to except what you find evidence against. So haram is only what we can prove from the Quran and from the Sunnah. So if we don't find the evidence there, then inshallah it's okay you can do it. For instance, at the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, there were no microwave ovens. Can we use a microwave oven? Why? What's the proof? Well, because there's nothing in Islam against it. So you can do it. There's nothing like that. It said certain kinds of fire or certain kind of this or certain kind. No. Nothing said that. So you can do it. When it comes to music, music is one of the things in Islam that is permissible with a lot of limitations. Islam is permissive, giving permission for music because there's not a general statement banning all music. But there is a lot of limitation. And if you want to get involved in music, you have to learn all these limitations. So some people would rather just say, forget about it. I'm not going to get close to it because I don't want to go to hell. Not even for two seconds. And first and foremost is that the Quran itself has a beautiful sound when it's recited. And some people refer to that like, it's like music, then they're talking about it. But this is not the definition we're giving music. But it is sweet and it's nice to listen to, isn't it? Immediately after that, there's something in Arabic language called nasheed. Nasheed is this singing sort of like to, uh, to us on various subjects about Islam, which we learn about our akhidah, our beliefs. We learn about companions. We learn about some of the battles. We learn how to deal with problems. And it's a lot of fun to memorize nasheed. And there were some very famous ones at the time of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he liked. He actually liked hearing some of these things. So this is okay. But the content, what is being said, you have to know what it means so that you're not saying something that's against Islam. So don't just memorize something in Arabic and you didn't know the meaning. Make sense? You need to know the meanings. The next thing about the music is that a lot of times to keep rhythm, you have to tap on something. You tap, Keep a rhythm going, and then you're able to uh, maintain this as a rhythm ongoing, keep it even. So then people will want to pick up drums. Well, they did that at the time of Muhammad too. There was a particular type of, of drum called a duff, which we call a tambourine. Only the tambourines today that we find have bells on them. This isn't what they had. That's not permissible. What's permissible is the duff or the, it's a, a, a skin stretched over the top of a, a, an opening, sort of like a, a tambourine. You can top it, boom, 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 boom. And they used to use it like marching and things like that and sing their nasheed while they marched and boom, boom. And that's okay. But what you're going to find immediately is Shaitan going to tell you, well, if that's okay, then all drums are okay. And drums. Oh my gosh, today they have drums that actually play music. Some are uh, designed, they play down the Caribbean, that uh, it's a drum and you're beating on it, but it sounds like you're playing some kind of a piano or something. They have many types of instruments today that are percussion that actually produce all these different sounds and tones. And if you said, well, that's okay, then why not the piano? The piano is a percussion instrument. The piano works off of striking a string. When you hit the key, there's a hammer inside the piano that works off of the key that strikes three strings, except in the bass section, it drops down to one. 
But when you hit the key, it hits the strings. That's percussion. You could say, well, it's a drum. Then you could say, well, the xylophone. That's definitely tuned bars, and I'm hitting them with this little mallet. So that would be all right. And it would go on and go on and go on. And those are not permissible because they are musical instruments. The brass, the woodwind, the violin, stringed instruments, all of these fall in the musical instrument category. And this is not me saying this. Trust me. I was 38 years in the music business. When I came to Islam, I had to leave the business. I had made millions of dollars in that business. If there was something wrong with it, then I had to know. If there was nothing wrong with it, trust me, I'd still be doing it. Most of my life was dedicated to music. So it's not fun for me to tell you that I can't do that anymore. Allah tells us in the very same chapter of the Quran that I read to you already about children, Surah Luqman. He tells us in chapter 6, you can read it for yourself. Wa min nas and from human beings, mankind, there are those who purchase idle talk to mislead from the path of Allah without knowledge. And it takes it by the way of mockery. For such there will be a humiliating torment in the hellfire. And what was this talking about? Does anybody know? Musical instruments. And how do we know? Abdullah ibn Abbas, who was one of the greatest scholars and knew the Prophet ﷺ very well, said so himself about this particular verse. He said, I swear that's music, that's music, that's music. Also about this, the prophet, peace be upon him, said that from my people there will be those who will consider illegal sex, wearing silk, drinking alcohol and the use of musical instruments as legal. He said that. And today we have people who do that. I have heard scholars, so-called scholars, make different forms of temporary marriage. You can be married for two hours, give the girl some money and just go on and it's okay. Zawjimuta. And this is what in English? Zaujimuta in English, prostitution. It's very serious. Some scholars said that that was okay. Not real scholars, some people. Also, wearing silk. I've heard them say today, well, it's just some silk in the tie. and It's okay. It's no big deal. Drinking alcohol. I've heard this from several of the Gulf countries. They said, well, if it's just a little bit of alcohol, it's okay. Just a little teeny bit, it's okay. And they'll say, well, there's alcohol in everything. And that's true. But the amount of alcohol that you'll find in an orange, even if you multiplied it tens of thousands of times over, still can't get you drunk. Because the stuff with it doesn't work like that. But they did it. And musical instruments. And today I read it from a so-called scholar in his book, which is called, should be called Al-Halal Wal Halal, because nothing's haram. Said that he quotes the same exact verse and the same hadith that I just quoted to you, and he said, but the way I look at it is it's okay. So, I'm telling you the way I looked at it. And if you accept me what he said, have a nice time. And if you accept this, then you'll be like me and you'll have to give up the music.